After yesterday's show, I began to think about the positives and negatives of Ohio State since Ryan Day has been the head coach. And this one thought popped into my head. Are the Ohio State Buckeyes in a good spot under Ryan Day? I have an answer for you to that question. You can catch it here today on Locked on Buckeyes. You are Locked on Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeyes? Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Buckeyes for the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is is Tuesday, June the 6th in the year 2023, and I want to thank you for making Lots of Buckeyes your first listen or first watch of every single day. During today's episode, we will discuss ways the Buckeyes can improve over the next season under Ryan Day. But first, before discussing ways that the Buckeyes can improve, are they in a good spot? Under Ryan Day. And I think to do this, it's twofold. Kind of got to analyze where Ryan Day has led the Buckeyes over the four years he has been the head football coach. But also, in the grand scheme of things, in the entire country, in the Big Ten, how does Ryan Day have the Buckeyes in that point of view as well? So it's a kind of, there's different avenues and branches to this one question. When you look at the grand scheme of things in the Big Ten, you may want to say no. Back-to-back um, seasons where the Buckeyes aren't winning the Big Ten Conference, back-to-back seasons where the Buckeyes are not are not um, beating their rival. And so on that point of view for the Big Ten, you would say no. Also in the Big Ten, I don't think you can find a better roster on any of the 14 teams in the Big Ten Football Conference than the Ohio State Buckeyes. And I understand last year didn't win the conference. 2021 didn't win the conference. But ultimately, when I look at this team and I see Ohio State play the football, it's hard to find a roster top to bottom that is more complete in the Big Ten Conference than the Ohio State Buckeyes. So on that standpoint, it's yes. Like roster um, construction. He's put a good roster together. You have to take that into account. We look at the grand scheme of things, and I'm going to go around the country and discuss different programs. And I'm going to have my answer, and I'm sure you will have your answer as well when it comes to the big dogs in the sport, the blue bloods and those that are on the cusp or close to being blue blood teams maybe in a short period of time. What do you think Ohio State during Ryan Day Sr. has been in a um, better spot than USC? I think so. Oh, since Ryan Day has been the head coach, do you think the Buckeyes have been a better team um, in the grand scheme of things than Oklahoma or Texas? I think, yes, better than both the Sooners and the Longhorns. What about down in the South? Florida State, absolutely. Miami, absolutely. Florida, absolutely. Now, Alabama and Georgia might be the only two schools in the South that I would say they are not, the Buckeyes are not in a better spot in under Ryan Day. Think about this, though, in the SEC. Tennessee's coming up. I don't think anybody this year thinks Tennessee's going to be a better football team than the Ohio State Buckeyes. On the East Coast, Clemson might be the only team that comes close, but even then, Clemson over the past two years has not been on Ohio State's level. In the Big Ten, you got Penn State, you got Michigan. That's it. Clearly, that's it. And you've got Notre Dame as an independent that, well, if they were in a conference, I think they may be able to say they want a conference or two, but they're an independent. And so I, I even then, I still think Ohio State's in a better spot than Notre Dame. So I do think the Buckeyes are in a good spot under Ryan Day currently. Currently roster constructed. Currently the way the coaching staff is constructed. I believe the Ohio State Buckeyes are in a good spot under Ryan Day. And I say that because I realize Penn State's going to be good this year. You might get a better Maryland team. You're going to get a good Michigan team. And I don't think the Buckeyes should be favored to lose to any of those teams. I even think Michigan week, uh, Thanksgiving weekend, that game might even be a toss-up. 
because I think Michigan's going to be good. Their schedule's weak, super, super weak. And so that does aid them to be better uh, prepared for the Buckeyes. Less injuries, um, running the score up. Vegas, Vegas is going to like them. But the Buckeyes are going to be tested this year. I don't put much stock in opening opening um, the regular season up against Indiana. Yes, it's a road test. It's the Hoosiers. They're trash. So I'm not going to come on here and say, oh, it's a road game in the Big Ten. It's going to be tough. Have you seen the Indiana Hoosiers play football? Have you realized how bad the team has been over the past few years? I think you have. I have. That team is trash. And I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, Big Ten team. No. Reality is the Buckeyes should roll into Bloomington and bulldoze the Hoosiers in that day. Now, my buddy Jacob Brood of Locked on Hoosiers, some might say Jacob should push back on that, but I think even Jacob realizes that Hoosiers are trash and they're no match for the Buckeyes. But Western Kentucky will pose some type of test. Still think the Buckeyes should win that game, but there will be a test in that matchup. Notre Dame, Penn State, Michigan. You hope Michigan State's better. You hope Maryland's better. You hope Wisconsin's somewhat of a test. But the Buckeyes really don't have that many tough games this year which is part of the reason why I do believe they'll be just fine. They should roll into that game against the Wolverines Thanksgiving weekend undefeated. Now, I'm saying that right now, and I do understand that Notre Dame's going to be tougher, Penn State's going to be tougher. A lot of stuff's going to be tougher than it was a year ago. However, the Buckeyes should roll in there and be just fine. Now, in the playoff, I'm going to keep saying it. You can tell me Utah should be in the playoff. Doesn't really worry me. Doesn't worry me right now at all. You should tell me USC should be there. Okay? I still think Ohio State's in a good spot if USC is in a playoff. Oklahoma? Maybe. Texas? Quinn Ewers, Arch Manning? Let me know. I still think the Buckeyes are in a better spot currently than those schools. When it comes to Alabama and Georgia, then there's a conversation regarding schools that can beat the Buckeyes. When it comes to Clemson, Cade Klubnik, I don't know what to expect from him. I have no idea. And so, does Dabble Sweeney have some magic? And can he get the Tigers back to the playoff? That's TBD to be determined. But there aren't many schools in the country that I say are in a better spot than the Buckeyes, which, which is why I say in the Big Ten, they're in a good spot in the grand scheme of things in those 14 schools. When it comes to the big picture, all the schools, all the good schools, all the good teams in the country, I still say when you compare the Buckeyes to the rest of the country, Ohio State is in a good spot when you think about them. However, even though the Buckeyes are in a good spot, Big Ten-wise or national picture-wise, there are still ways they can improve. What are some of those ways the Buckeyes can improve the team in the upcoming season? We discuss those next on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,000. Five hundred dollars once again. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to two thousand five hundred dollars. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thanks for making locked on book guys your first listen every single day. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On Book Guys and leave a five. Star review and rating on Spotify. Leave a five star review on Apple. Leave a five star review and a comment as well. If you're on the YouTube watching this video right now, leave a comment, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live. Locked on Buckeyes is a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. We're all looking for ways we can improve. Even in our personal lives, may it be um, at our jobs throughout the week or may it be in our home life or may it be you're trying to do a better job of managing your finances. We're all trying to find a way or ways we 
can improve. And when it comes to Ohio State, yes, they're in a good spot under Ryan Day. And I understand back-to-back seasons, not winning the Big Ten, back-to-back seasons, not beating your rival. I understand all of that. They got a Rose Bowl win one year. You're really, 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 really close to beating Georgia, the then defending national champion. And then also, I think everybody believes the Buckeyes win the playoff, uh, the national championship, if they get in that spot. So there's going to be a lot of scrutiny about Ryan Day right now, but even going into the upcoming season. And I got a show coming up soon uh, with my guy, Jeff Hunt. And you're going to love to hear that because it's been a long time since Jeff's been on here. And I can't wait to get that on here. Um, That's coming to you sometime next week. When it comes to Ryan Day, thinking about improving what Ryan Day has done, Ryan Day has changed some things and altered some things that we witnessed under Urban Meyer. Some are positive changes. Some are negative changes. But at the same time, they are changes. How can the Buckeyes improve? How can things get better under Ryan Day in a short period of time? The upcoming season. Not even saying over the next three to five years. Nobody knows if Ryan Day is going to be at Ohio State over the next three to five years. But just in the, over the next few months, throughout the rest of the year, the calendar year, how can things get better? I think offensively, things are pretty good. Coaching-wise, I have, when I look up and down the coaching staff, the roster of coaches, do I have an issue with Justin Fry as O-line coach? No. Do I have an issue with Tony Alford, running back coach? No. Do I have an issue with Corey Dennis, QB coach? No. Do I have an issue with Brian Hartline, wide receiver coach? No. The only two things that are unknown on the coaching staff is Coach Keegan, the new tight ends coach, and Brian Hartline being an OC. Now, some of you might want to push back and say, Jay, I believe in I believe in Brian Hartline. I uh, see what he's done with the offense. I uh, see what he's done with those guys. And ultimately, I think he'll be a good piece of the pie for the offense running that thing. I have no idea. I, I don't. And I don't think you, I think you're, it's a little speculation, which is great. I'm, I'm fine with that. I do a little bit on this show every now and then, especially this time of year. It's okay. We can all predict things. But ultimately, I don't think anybody, you nor myself, knows what Brian Hartline will be as an offensive coordinator for the Ohio State Buckeyes in 2023. Which is why on offense, I just really want to see some more consistency with the coaching across the board. I think Corey Dennis is fine. Alfred's fine. Justin Fry has a track record that's fine. I want to see more consistency across the board, not just with the every day to day with the offensive players, but also in the recruiting. Because the Buckeyes have had a thing, they can get elite receivers. Quarterbacks, they've been able to get some guys later on in the cycle, which is just a nature of the beast. But I want some more consistency, and I don't think I think they've been doing a good, good job of being consistent. I, a lot of it's just the unknown things, not Alfred, not Fry, not Corey Dennis. It's the unknowns, and I want to see some consistency from them. Consistency from Brian Hartland as a good, as a really good to above average offensive coordinator, and then Coach Key at tight ends make that thing better. Allow the offense to be better under Brian Hartline. Allow the tight ends to be better under a new tight ends coach. Those are the things I'm looking for. So it's not consistency saying Alfred's doing a bad job recruiting or Justin Fry, oh, the track record's there, but I don't trust it. It's not that. It's consistency under the new guys, which is a great way to make things improve. Because I think a lot of people have seen, have had issues with a former offensive line coach and the way the recruiting was getting back to recruiting elite guys on the offensive line. I think Justin Fry one has a good off of the line group already put together for the 2024 recruiting class, but also I think his efforts and the efforts of the already of the guys that are already committed to the school to play football. I believe those two things together will allow the Buckeyes to go out and get maybe a fifth, a sixth, or a seventh off of the off of the lineman in the 2024 recruiting class to beef up and to better develop those guys. There. Speaking of develop on offense, sticking with the offensive line. I think development at this position has been something that people have questioned or wanted to get better, which is why when it comes to ways a team can improve offensively, you got to do a better job of creating depth on the offensive line for the Ohio State Buckeyes. And we think about the depth. We think about 
the ways the team can improve. We think about ways that the team um, can be better over the next few years. You got to have depth. Think about if one guy goes down. I'm just going to say one guy's name. Matthew Jones, right guard. Now, you may say Enoch Vamahi, come in, right guard, um, in the backup role. He'll do a decent job. Okay. Well, what if your right tackle goes down? If your left tackle goes down? Now, these are things you don't want to happen. Now, I am understanding that the scenario that I'm playing out is rare and it's probably not going to happen for the Ohio State Buckeyes. But what if it happens? What if you're looking at an area where the Buckeyes are looking at multiple guys um, going down to an injury at that position? Will they be okay? We saw a year ago where the Buckeyes had multiple injuries on the on the in the running back room. The Buckeyes still played a lot of the two of the two of the top guys were hurt. You still played them. Mind Williams, Travion Henderson. And we saw what happened there. So creating depth on the offensive line is a need. And that's something that can't happen over the next few years, over the next few months. But ultimately, that also is something that you can help be helped and aided by the recruiting of the Buckeyes. But also, it's also something that will be evident over the next few years at Ohio State. Say you create some depth and build some depth this year. Coming up next year and the year after, you're going to say, oh, remember what we talked about here on Locked on Buckeyes, how the Buckeyes need to create and build some more depth on the offensive line? What do we witness? What do we see? Ultimately, we see the Buckeyes doing that thing they need to do to be a better team, and it starts, it can start right now. Now, ultimately, how could things improve? It's kind of just something I say all the time. But it goes twofold, I guess, a little, a, a little twofold. A balanced offense is great, but also keep getting now sustaining this. Now, this is not a negative. This is more something that can't sustain and make the offense better. Um, you want to be a, have the best offense in the country. Um, having a pro style quarterback is great. It's it's phenomenal. Now, you want to have a mobile quarterback, but a guy who puts an emphasis with his arm, it's phenomenal, man. It's phenomenal. Great quarterback play is, is needed. That can improve because uh, I think the quarterback play will be something that will be a topic, especially early in the season, because I don't think anybody knows what Devin Brown or Kyle McCord will do in the fall. But an easy way for the offense to improve, elite quarterback play, elite quarterback play consistently, it's going to help everybody, everybody. But I'll say it once. I'll say it again. One last thing about the offense. As good as it is, the offense ain't balanced. <laughs> we ain't seen a balanced offense at, a, at Ohio State in a while. A balanced offensive attack. More emphasis with running, but also emphasizing things that the guys can do. If you know somebody hurt, stop running them off tackle. Stop giving the ball to them to hand it off if they got a foot injury. You're only hurting yourself. Decision-making by the coaches can drastically impact and make things better for the Buckeyes' offense during the season coming up in the fall. Speaking of improvements, I've only hit on one side of the ball. It's another side of the ball. It's had more issues for the Buckeyes since Ryan Day's been the head coach. How could things improve for the Buckeyes' defense? We'll discuss it next on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. Billiards Plus also can set you up with a brand new top-of-the-line grill that will last for generations. We all know how hard it is with the, with the supply chain issues this year and getting certain things shipped on time. So when it comes to ordering that one big gift for someone you love, Billiards Plus has exactly what you're looking for. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, Alhassen, Canada, Billiards, and more. Plus, top-of-the-line grills from PK, Napoleon, Memphis, and the Griddle. That will be the last grill you own. Seriously, these grills stand the test of time. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. Visit their showroom on Dublin Center Drive in Dublin. Check them out at billiards Plus. Dot com. Billions Plus, family owned and operated for generations. 
Today's all about improving things for the Ohio State Buckeyes. One of the things that I'm going to touch on today is the recruiting. Coming up later this week, we'll discuss Buckeye recruiting and how it can get better under Ohio State head coach Ryan Day. The everydayers, you heard yesterday's show, you heard things that came out that Ryan Day admitted that he did wrong in the game against the Wolverines last season. And one of them was, well, the main topic, not focusing on the right thing, the details, the smallest of details. Yeah, beating up, beating them up is great. Winning the game is great. How do you go about winning the game? One thing that Ryan Day said, focus on the small details, winning every rep, winning at winning everything, winning every play, every snap, winning that. So you're going to win the game automatically. If you win, if you win first down, second down, third down, punt, go back on, uh, go back. Um, you you get the ball on offense, first down, second down, touchdown. If you do that over the course of four quarters, you're going to win the game. You're going to. The math is in your favor by doing that. Defensively, the Buckeyes can improve in numerous ways. I'm going to move very quickly because I don't want to, you know, spend up all the time discussing these things here, but. How can the Buckeyes improve defensively over the next few months, upcoming season? This is going away from recruiting because recruiting can be discussed, but I want to say that I want to say that for another day. You got to start with the D-line, man. This one's simple to me. I don't know why it hasn't been done consistently by Ohio State. Play the guys that are good enough to play. No, 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 no. Let me just change that a little bit. Play the best players consistently. You need to imagine Phil Jackson, former uh, Bulls and Chicago Bulls and LA Lakers head coach. Imagine Phil Jackson last five minutes not having his A lineup on the court. He will get torn to pieces. By the commentators in that game questioning what he was doing, the um, post-game show, local radio um, back then would be like, Phil Jackson, what's going on? This ain't your A lineup, and you wonder why you lost a game. Put your best guys in. It, it should be expected, should be automatic, but we wouldn't have said a year ago, the Buckeyes weren't playing their best guys on defense, and we saw exactly what happened. Play the best players. But also... Not just D-line, but that's one area where it's like, there's some guys on the bench that are better than the guys on the field. The guys on the field are showing they're not better than the guys on the bench, but the guys on the bench are still on the bench due to coaches' decisions. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. Play the best players. But another way the Buckeyes can improve, and I do think the two guys that are that we're going to talk about here, oh, <laughs> buddy, they can get it done. Stu Chambers, Tom Eichenberg, Eichenberg. Be the best linebacker tandem in the country. I'll dial the back a little bit. Be the best linebacker tandem in the Big Ten. That's the first goal. Eh, you don't want to limit yourself to the Big Ten. Let's go back big picture because we're in the Big Ten being better than, than Michigan State and, and Penn State and all the others. There's some good linebackers there. I was going to have some uh, good linebackers. Wisconsin going to have good linebackers. But you're not going to compare your guys to the Big Ten, the entire country, and they need to be one of the best linebacker tandems in the country. It is needed. It's desperately needed because we have seen for a while the Buckeyes linebacker play has gone down under Ryan Day. Yeah, you got guys getting drafted and Baron Browning and Pete Werner um, and other players like that. That's great. That's understandable. What about the guys Ryan Day is bringing in? Is he bringing guys in that are elite, that are being developed? And also, guys, that when they're on the field, it's clear. It's clear. Their future first-round, second-round draft picks? I don't think so. Even my guy Pete Werner from um, down the street from the high school I went to at Cathedral, Cathedral High School in, in Indianapolis, Indiana. Pete Werner wasn't, to me, a surefire second-round pick. That's where he went. Why wasn't he? I just didn't. I wasn't sure. I thought day two pick, round three pick, second round I don't know, man. It wasn't a concrete thing. When it comes to the Ohio State Buckeyes, I do believe, I 100% believe, they need to get back to doing the things they do well. They need to go back to being a school that has the best linebackers in the country. 
They need to, not just the Big Ten, in the country. And ultimately, I think that can happen coming up in the fall because of how good I believe, I believe, Steel Chambers and Tom Eikenberg, maybe even C.J. Hicks will be for the Buckeyes in the fall. Add in DB, play corner, play um, Denzel Berg, Davidson, Igmanosin, Jordan Hancock, whatever it may be, add in that. But to me, it all starts up front. How can the Buckeyes improve on defense? Improve. D-line, linebacker play, that's going to make things a whole lot better for the guys in the back half of the defense. We're out of here on a Tuesday. Remember, new schedule for this month on the show. Only four shows in a week, Monday through Thursday. There are no more shows on Friday here on Locked on Buckeyes during the month of June in the year 2023. Out of here on a Tuesday. You can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. You can send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. Thanks for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen every single day. Now is the perfect time to check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast. Get all the news you need to know going on in and around the world of sports in 20 minutes or less. Locked on Buckeyes and Locked on Sports Today. They're both a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Day for Lots of Buckeyes here on a Tuesday. I am your host, Jay Stevens. I'll see you next time.